you know, the presence of God this morning is so intimate and it is so powerful. His intimacy of his heart over each and every one of us as his children. But as we have chosen, as we've been determined this morning to come into his presence, to love upon him, to worship him, to bring the everything of ourselves to him, desiring for the more of him. But when we come in that intimacy, there is a crossover. There is an exchange as we come to the truth of the cross, as we come to the truth of who Jesus is. But sometimes we come to the cross and we stand and we just look. The invitation of God is that we would come to the cross and bring the everything of ourselves to it. That we're not just standing and looking at who he is, but in relationship there is a crossover of intimacy in the spirit that we bring ourselves unto him and lay ourselves down before him. And it is in that intimacy of the surrender of ourselves to him that allows the exchange of the cross to happen that as we give everything of ourselves unto him and lay ourselves down, that we are nothing without him. There is a, an exchange at the cross where he releases the everything of himself over our lives in truth. And when the, the truth of the cross begins to flow in our hearts and through our lives as we come into that surrender, there is power. There is a power and an equipping not because of who we are, but because of who we allow Jesus to be to each and every one of us. And every single one of us is under pressure. The, the life of this world is a constant living under pressure. Pressure of people's opinions. Pressure of the demands, expectation of what everybody else is doing that we should fit in with. And unless we can separate it, separate the world from our truth in Jesus, we get pulled down very, very quickly and we get distracted and taken away very, very quickly from our true identity in Christ and the very purpose for which we are called. Therefore, there's a discipline and a focus, an application of our faith that we do come to him in faith. And our faith is, a, a, they say it's blind faith because we cannot see. And the reality is, it's a faith journey of trust, that full assurance in the heart that we have that Jesus is who he is, that Jesus has done what he says he has done, that we already have the victory because Jesus has gone ahead of us, he's gone to hell, that we do not have to. And because he has overcome sickness and death, because he has overcome sin, we also are overcomers in him. And we can know these biblical truths, but they can very quickly melt away when our focus goes off of Jesus and in the wrong direction. When the voice we're listening to is not the truth of the word that God has spoken to us, that this is who we are in him, but we look at the circumstances of our lives and very quickly get taken away and distracted by the lies of the enemy who will suggest that we're failing, that we're messed up, that we're weak, that we don't qualify, that we're not worthy. And all the time, the voice of the enemy filters through to water down the truth of who Christ is for us. Then we get very quickly affected by the pressure that is brought towards us. And we have to know how to resist that pressure. We have to understand, first of all, that there is a pressure. There is a battle going on, but the battle belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most of you are aware of the reports in the news in this last couple of weeks of the aeroplane that had a part of the body of the plane 
blow off the plane when the plane was up in the air flying. And part of the report says the hole in the fuselage was described as being as wide as a refrigerator. That's a big hole in the body of a plane that is thousands of feet up in the air. And it says in the wind blowing out of it, because once you remove a panel of the aircraft, the pressurized cabin is totally compromised and the air on the outside is blowing in. It said that the, the blowing out of it was so powerful that it sucked the shirt off a teenage boy sitting nearby. But the plane managed to land safely with no casualties, praise God, mm -hmm. for the ability of the pilot to maintain discipline and control and to keep that plane in a position that it was able to land safely and everybody was saved. So what does that have to do with us this morning, you might say? The reality is, is that aeroplanes are designed to withstand immense pressure. They can go higher into the air than any other vehicle that has ever been created. They are designed for purpose. The pressure inside the plane, combined with the strong materials that it's created from, keep the outside elements from coming in. It's not just enough for the aeroplane to be created in a physical mass by the metals that are pulled together. The higher it goes, there has to be a counterbalance of the pressure inside the aeroplane to counterbalance the pressure of the air outside the aeroplane. And if they're not kept balanced, the plane can implode. The science of how a plane flies and how it sustains mankind when we are up in the air is a very balanced, pressurized circumstance. In the same way, we as believers are as exactly like those planes. God has designed us to overcome and to be powerful under pressure. There is an outside pressure, there is an enemy, there is a cruel world, there is a way of the world that comes against us every single day. But when we are in Christ, when we know who he is and we surrender our lives to him and we believe the truth of the word and we stand confident in the truth of the cross and we allow our lives to be led by him, then the counterbalance of the pressure that the world brings is counterbalanced by the truth in Christ that we remain balanced as overcomers in Jesus, that we do not give in to the outside pressure. It's a journey that we take by choice of our surrender to walk in faith in Jesus. God has designed us in such a way that as our hearts connect into relationship with him, we are built to win. By putting our lives into the hands of Jesus, but believing in the truth of the cross, we already have the victory as overcomers in him as we believe the truth of the word and apply it to our lives and allow the Holy Spirit to bring conviction that all that is in our lives that does not balance out against who Jesus is, we are willing to let go of the ways of the world, the lies and deception of the enemy, and we are willing to stand in truth in the word and apply obediently what God is asking to our lives and when we do that when we walk in all the fullness of what jesus is asking of our lives to be in him there is a love grace that covers us each time we hiccup each time we mess up but we come into true repentance to say i'm sorry i've made the wrong choice help me lord to sort out what problem i've created for myself because i didn't stay true to you I didn't stay focused in you. I didn't remain disciplined in you. I acted without you. I cast you aside and got into the temptation of the world and the influence of man and the opinion of others. But I simply went with the, the flow of the wider road that is available through the world. I forgot to hold on to your hand, Jesus, and ask you 
what you were saying about this and what I should do about it. And if we don't hold on to his hand and stay so close to him in relationship, we are forever exposed. We are exposed to that wind of the enemy that comes to attack and to destroy. It is like us being that plane with a gaping hole in its side that the wind comes in and praise God, only the boy's shirt was sucked out because he could have followed it. But that's a picture of what the enemy does to us. He comes and he sucks the life out of us on the temptation that he brings and where our thought process chooses to go and the actions that we take that are contradictory to the will of God, we get sucked out of the truth of the cross and we are bound up in what the enemy is doing. We become trapped. We're not in that safe, safe place. God has designed us with the ability to withstand immense pressure when we stand in him. An aeroplane will fail in flight if the door is opened and air gets inside and changes the pressure. Likewise, we can fail to overcome a challenge if we allow those circumstances to get inside of us. If we open ourselves up to what we choose to believe in the natural, instead of seeing everything through the truth of the cross and the supernatural power of who God is for us, where our heart attitude goes will determine where we will walk. And if we take our eyes off of who Jesus is and behave in a way that is contradictory to the truth of the leading of the word, we open ourselves up like an aeroplane door being left open in flight and the wrong power comes in. So we fail to overcome the challenges of life if we allow the circumstances to get inside of us. In other words, we take on board the problem and we only see the problem through the limitation of our knowledge, our own understanding and our own attitude and the opinions of many other people. If we open the door of our spiritual aeroplane and allow the stresses of the outside to get in, we will crash. We will get burned out. We will be destroyed. Why? Because we feed on all that the enemy wants us to understand and believe to take us down and out instead of staying focused on Jesus and declaring his word over our life that no matter what it looks like, we believe what God says about it. Remember, we are all in this world, but we are not of this world. Our citizenship has changed in the kingdom purposes of who we are by faith in following Jesus Christ. We've been relocated from the kingdom of darkness, which is this world, into the kingdom of light, which is the truth of Christ. So our faith journey has relocated our positioning and our identity. In Colossians chapter 1, Paul says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. Now this is Paul covering his people. That as people come through to faith in Christ, as a leader, as the overseer, he has a heart of compassion for those who are now choosing to follow Jesus. So Colossians chapter 1, starting from verse 9. And it's the heart of every leader, as we shepherd the flock, to cover the flock in prayer. Because as we all come together in faith, we should be praying for each other. Mm -hmm. And Paul says, we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. As we say yes to following Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit that fills us with the new knowledge according to his teaching to bring us into alignment with his will through the wisdom that we learn and the understanding that we take on board as the Holy Spirit leads us. But the question is, what are we feeding on? 
And the reason Paul is praying for the believers in that way is he says, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Now, there's an awful lot in there. We do need knowledge from God. We need the wisdom of God. We need understanding through the power of the Holy Spirit of all that God is and what he's saying to us. And in obedience to it, we live a life that is worthy of who Jesus is, and we learn how to please him in every way. It's the connection of true relationship. It's the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that we need to help us to live a life worthy of following Jesus. But our life is in his hands, and as we hear, understand, and wisdom, and we go with the leading of the Spirit to obey, we become full of a life that is worthy of serving him and pleasing to him in every way, that we bear fruit in all that we do, that we continue to grow repeatedly in the knowledge of who God is. And verse 11 says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. It's the Holy Spirit that strengthens us and empowers us and brings the might of God into our lives that we are built up in such a way that we have great ability to withstand what the enemy is doing and we have patience to endure the journey as we trust Jesus to release us from it. Sometimes he comes in power and takes us out of, but many times we are going through the journey to come through. When Moses led the Israelite people to the Red Sea, it was in the power of God that as Moses extended his hand by faith in God, that those waters parted and they went through. God didn't remove the sea and take them round a completely different way. He separated the waters for them to go through. And that's what God is wanting to do in every single one of our circumstances. Whatever it looks like, and we may look as though we've come to a full stop and we don't know where to go. But as we position ourselves and take our stand, God will show us a way through. But we have to include him in the journey. We cannot do it in our own strength. The pressure of the outside world coming in upon us on everything that we get distracted by will weaken us. And it will take us down and out. So it says that we are being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, because it's the power of God that we're calling down into the circumstance. His enabling that through his glorious might, we do have that endurance and patience, giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of, of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Now let's read that again giving joyful thanks, praising God always in an attitude of gratitude for all the things that are the way that we desire them to be, all the good things in our life. We are grateful that we focus on what is good, not what isn't. That we give joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. We are in the family of God by faith in Jesus. We have an inheritance in Jesus that all that Jesus is and has, we are. And all that Jesus did, we will do. In fact, the word says we will do greater things than Jesus did. But we have to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit in a surrender and desire for him to come down in power, that we give him permission to do so. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He has rescued us from the enemy's camp from the dominion of darkness, and he's brought us into the kingdom of Jesus, the son that he loves, that we are co-heirs with Christ in this kingdom purposes, and we are redeemed, and we are forgiven, that when we take ownership of what choices we are making that are so wrong and separate us away from God, they're in true repentance, we are forgiven, and we are called back into position and purpose for him. The condition of our world is fallen. 
We live in a fallen world, and we all know that, and there is pressure. There is pressure in this fallen world that we, we will submit to if we do not know who Christ is for us. The world is corrupted by sin, and because of that, we face many challenges. Jesus warned us in John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. This is Jesus talking to the disciples, trying to prepare them for the fact that he is going to die. And he's laying a foundation of understanding into their spirit that when he does die, they should not fall apart. In this world, you will have trouble. Jesus tells us we will have issues. But take heart, I have overcome the world. We have to take heart in Jesus, that no matter what the circumstances look like, he has a plan and he will help us through it. Even in the face of trouble, we can be full of confidence and have joy. We are citizens of heaven, and Jesus has already won the victory for us through the power of the cross. In 1 John 5, verse 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 5, it says, Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Do we believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Are we walking in relationship with him? Therefore, we are overcomers because of our faith in him. We cannot just repeat what the world keeps saying. We have to reflect what the word of God says. And the word says that we are overcomers no matter what pressure we may be, be under. But we do have choices on how we are going to keep that pressure balanced. How do we keep the pressures surrounding us from getting inside of our spiritual planes? The primary way is to have a solid understanding of who we are in Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and and self-discipline when we have relationship with jesus there is no fear we do not back away from the enemy we learn how to stand we take up our battle position in christ put on the armor of god we do not run away from we stand and confront in truth we are not made to be timid god gives us power through the holy spirit God loves us in the place where we are right now and he gives us a spirit of self-discipline that as we follow what he is asking, our antenna is towards him and nothing else. And if we do so, if we stay disciplined in Christ, knowing his love, receiving his power, and we understand the truth of the word, we will stand confident in him. And then Philippians 4 verse 7, Philippians 4 verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we stay focused on Jesus, where there is a peace in God, that despite what the mess might look like, if we look at it in the natural understanding with our negative thinking and our own opinion and our own considerations and our own limitation, we will have no peace. But when we stand confident on who Jesus is, the peace we have in him, even if nothing changes, we can still have peace right in the middle of our circumstances, no matter what the pain, because that peace will guard our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus. And the mind is the first thing that the enemy will attack every single time. And when our heart lines up with our mind in our wrong thinking in Jesus, then the pressure of the world comes in and it will tilt the scales away from who we are in Christ. We have to know how to withstand that pressure that we keep our minds stayed on him. Do not be conformed, as it says. 
Romans 12. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What are we choosing to think? What are we feeding on? What are we choosing to believe? You know, this week I haven't been well. For the first time in many, many, many years, it must be about 25 years since I last had to retire to bed because of being sick. Even in my 12 years being sick, I never retired to bed. I got up every single day. This week, I had three days through having the flu so badly, I couldn't actually get up. And I slept a lot in the healing process. But there came a point in the week where I am weak, I am numb, I am exhausted, and I just needed, for want of a better word, a little bit of space or distraction. Now, I always go to the Lord and I will enter into his presence in worship. That was my first port of call. There came a point as the day went on in the isolation and the separation where I thought I will just do something different. And I chose to watch a film. That time that I spent focused in that direction meant absolutely nothing to me. I couldn't register what I was watching. It certainly didn't feed anything good into my spirit. And having done so, this is my confession, I got to the end of the day and I had to repent and say, Lord, what a waste of time. What a waste of energy. What a distraction away from who I am in you. And I can't give that time back. It was a moment of just needing a distraction from what was going on physically. But it had no worth in my life at all. And I certainly didn't continue to do it, but I had to repent of doing it. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with watching a, a film if it's not watching other people's sin. But what is it feeding into your spirit? Now, my spirit was resistant to what the film was doing. I couldn't even take it on board. But I did, did have Holy Spirit conviction that that time I can never get back. How am I spending my time? Therefore, I repented and then obviously went back into the full focus of no matter how I feel, God is still present and still wanting to speak to me. That's how easily we can get distracted by something that just takes our view away from. And if we don't quickly get back on track, how many films are we watching? How many worldly activities are we doing? How many worldly conversations are we having? How are we feeding on to everybody else's opinion? How are, is the enemy able to take us down because we got distracted away from what is here and what we were believing for? And it may not be happening as quick as we want it to or that we desire to or in the way that we want it to. And we very quickly take our focus off of it because we feed on what it's supposed to look like this, feel like this, and be like this. And before we know it, we switched off fully from the truth of what the Spirit is saying. And the enemy is feeding us, and that pressure comes upon us. And before we know it, we crash. I praise God that Holy Spirit conviction came so quickly to me. Stay focused. Stay disciplined. You may feel rough. You may be isolated alone. But stay disciplined and focused in me. And I praise God for that call immediately back into his presence. Don't waste time. Nehemiah 8, at the end of verse 10, it says, Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We can all look at the circumstances of what we're going through. But if we grieve about them because the situation is not as we desire it to be, then we're spending so much negative time, attitude, and energy focusing to what isn't, we will never see what is. So we cannot grieve what isn't. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, when we're worshipping, that guy this morning said, he fills you with joy. The joy of the Lord is here right now. Will we receive it? Will we take hold of it and say, yes, Lord, my life might be messed up. But my joy is in you, and I do have freedom in you. And I will not allow the pressure of what is going on circumstantially to take me out of your hand. I've got everything to be thankful for, everything to be grateful for, and I am determined in you, and I will have the more than, as I have the victory over all things. Understanding the truths of what we've been given by God builds us up to keep the stresses of life from crashing our plane. 
Understanding who we have on the inside will always resist the pressure from the outside. And one way we remember our true identity is by spending time with God and studying the word of God. If we don't spend time with him, we won't know what we already have on the inside of us in him. If we don't know what we have been given by God, we will not be able to resist what is pressuring us from the outside. We need to be pressurized on the inside with the power of the word of God. We need to be pressurized on the inside with the Holy Spirit in us. We need to be pressurized on the inside, on the confidence we have on who Jesus is through the power of the cross. And that doesn't happen overnight. It's all part of our personal relationship with Jesus. At some point in our lives, we had to receive that relationship with Jesus, that he is our saviour and we belong to him. No one else could do that for us. And in the same way, our daily discipline, our daily relationship with God is something that has got to be done by us personally. Nobody else can do it for us. As, as a leader in the church, I cannot walk out your journey for you. We are here today to share the word of God, for which I am thankful. Whatever the Holy Spirit speaks to you through the word of God this morning is part of the truth and the learning curve of the relationship you have in the body of Christ as he ministers to us all this morning. But then when we leave this place, it's down to each and every one of us to pick up our Bibles and continue that relationship of searching out who Jesus is. And the enemy will always come with a pressure of life's plan we are so eager to go out of the house and be busy with whoever doing whatever. Instead of that discipline, the spending time with Jesus to fill us up in him first, that he becomes the protection that we need, that as we go out into the outside world, the choices we are making, the conversations we are having are godly. Because we filled ourselves up with him first and we go out in the arm of God that we can resist the pressure of the world's way. And if we're not disciplined in that way, we're always going to feed on what the enemy brings. And that will take us down and out. I could have sat and watched films forevermore. But it would not have fed my spirit. It would have not have protected my relationship. It would not have spoken truths to me in Christ that I needed to know to be able to come here today. So nobody else can journey that journey for us. It's our daily relationship with God that has to be walked out personally. The word says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Are we in reverent fear of who God is? Do we fully surrender to the authority that he is and desires to be? We are built to win in this life when we are relation in, in proper relationship with Jesus. Do we have a competitive spirit? Are we forever fighting? We don't have to. Jesus did not compete with Satan. Jesus defeated Satan through the power of the cross. Jesus won. And in him, we win too. He defeated the power of the, of the enemy. We don't have, have to lose. We can walk in Jesus and know that we win. We can walk in Jesus and know that we win, that we already have the victory. We need to learn how to associate more with being winners rather than losers. The world may look as though it's losing when we look at the politics, economics, the physical the personal circumstances, believers have the power to thrive in all stressful times. We can win even when we're living in a losing environment. The world may be falling down around us, but we're not. We are built to be powerful under the pressure of what is going on around us. 
You know, deep water fish were designed by God to withstand not only the intense water pressure, but also to, th to thrive in absolute darkness. The deeper you go down in the ocean, the darker it is. There's no light for the fish to follow. But the fish are designed to thrive in that circumstance. In the same way, we can trust that God has designed and equipped us to thrive in not only high-pressure moments, but the dark ones as well. The darkness should not scare us. <coughs> we are built with an internal light that glows in the dark. We are built to win under pressure. Pilots do not start out on flying their plane without knowing that that, that aeroplane will work properly. They don't deliberate. That, the pilot that day when the door fell off didn't deliberately take his plane. He trusted the people, the mechanics for the plane, that all was working well. Pilots put their trust in the design of the machine they are flying. And we should have even more trust that God has designed us to thrive in difficult circumstances. The Bible is filled with stories of godly men and women who thrived under the rule of, of heathen kings. The people were led astray all the time. But regardless of who is in our government or what the economic circumstance of the world looks like right now, we can still come out on top. Believers reap in a time of famine. If you look at Genesis chapter 26, in your own time, please, because we haven't got time to read it today. In verse 1, it says, and there was a famine in the land. In verse 12 and 13, it says, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Now you start out in that chapter, there is a famine, the ground is not good, there's no seed to grow. You hit verse 12, Isaac sowed in that soil in the land of famine by faith in God. And in God, he reaped the reward. The favor of God was upon him. God turned his circumstances around. He didn't run from the difficulty and say it's not possible. He stood in the difficulty and by faith planted. And God gave him the more than. And that's exactly what God is asking of us. Will we run away because of how we feel? Will we see the limitation? We will, will we have no hope? Will we just stay trapped? Or will we, by faith, stand so isaac sowed when there was a famine famine in the land but he sowed and reaped a hundredfold harvest in that same year and in fact he achieved so well that the philistines were so threatened by him that their king has asked him to leave the area even as slaves the hebrews prospers and the egyptians hated it you know when we consider the woman who was told by Elijah to take what she had and collect empty jars from her neighbor. And God allowed those jars to be filled up time and time again with oil that she could sell them. I wonder what the people watching observed. I wonder what they thought of this poor old lady that had been left a widow and had no provision. What would they think when now she's going around selling all these jars of oil and succeeding in faith in who God is? In 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, it says, This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Whilst we are living in this world, we are exactly like who Jesus is as co-heirs in Christ, that we have the same authority, the same truth, the same power. Are we standing in that authority? 
Are we standing in that power? Are we standing in that determination as overcomers that we are totally victorious in Christ? As Jesus is, so are we in this world. This means that we are anointed just as Jesus was anointed. And anointed means to carry power. We are full of power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So as a believer, we are filled up with that same power of God inside of each one of us that Jesus has. We are co heirs in Christ. He is our brother. All that God lavished over him, he lavishes over us too. But we have to take hold of it and believe for it. That we are of God. We are his children. And we overcome because greater is he that is in us than he is who is from the world. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God inside of us is way more powerful to keep the pressure of the outside world away from us that it will not crash our plane. But it's what we have on the inside that resists what comes against us from the outside. In Romans 8, verse 31, Romans 8, 31, it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Are we looking at the circumstances and giving in in fear? Are we stubborn-hearted and resistant to what God is asking? Are we so resilient to the Holy Spirit, so resistant to the truth and the leading of God, that we dare say to God, I don't want to. Doesn't matter how much you yell at me, God, and God doesn't have to shout because his authority is firm and true. But we're literally sometimes like little children, like toddlers, retaliating against God and resistant. I don't care what you say to me, I'm not, not going to do it. And yet, on the other hand, we're crying out in prayer and saying, Lord, show me the way. And all God can say is, I have shown you the way, but you're not being obedient to me. I can't show you anything else until you take this next best step that has been shown. So if God is for us, who can be against us? We can still remain powerful under pressure. When the weight of the world presses in around us, we do not have to buckle. We can stand strong because we know that the power of God is inside each one of us. The pressure on the inside of us, which comes from the greater one, is more powerful than anything in the world that tries to come against us. But we have to draw on it and we have to stand in it. Isaiah 14, 27 says, Isaiah 14, verse 27 For the Lord Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? When God has a plan and purpose for our lives, it will come about in purpose as we surrender into him by faith to believe what God is saying to us is true, and we learn to stand in it. God has a purpose and plan for our lives. Nothing will ever stop God's plans being fulfilled in our lives except us ourselves in the resistance of our hearts. God has a plan and a purpose and wants to do it. When God is released by faith in power to be allowed to have his way, because he cannot cut across our free will choice, we have to be surrendered to allow him to have his way. But when we say, yes, God, no man will thwart God's plans for us. His hand is stretched out. Who can turn it back? No circumstance, no person, no situation can stop God's plans unfolding when we stand on the power that is inside us and we are obedient to what God is asking and we step out in faith to take our place and be positioned for purpose, the power of God comes down and he will do it. I wasn't going to preach today 
because of the situation this week. He even had a conversation with Rev yesterday. I'm going to go down, I'm going to open up the church, and I have a backup plan. And last night God says he doesn't want to do the backup plan. He wants me to come by faith and stand. And I've done that many times, as you know. And I said, okay, God, I will come down. But what is it that you want to speak to us this morning? And it's no error that he's speaking to us about the pressure of the outside circumstance that comes against what is and who is inside us. Will we learn to stand? So in obedience, I stand this morning and God Holy Spirit is empowered to preach. And I praise God for what he's speaking to us all. Because when we preach messages, it's not that we're talking at you. It's the same message that, that pe penetrates our heart too as we speak it out. This message is for me just as much as it, as it, as it is for you. So I say again, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. That is the confidence we have to have. We have everything because of who God is for us. Will we stand? In John chapter 11, Verse 43, this is the story where Lazarus was sick. And when told about it, Jesus didn't drop everything and run to his side to heal him. In fact, it was four days later that Jesus arrived in that location. And by that time, Lazarus has died and has been four days buried in the tomb. And to everybody watching who was gathered to mourn with Mary and Martha over the death of their brother, Everybody's gathered in the tears. Everybody's gathered in the grief. Everybody's very sympathetic and feeling sorry for them. Jesus arrives exactly at the right time he was supposed to arrive for the glory of God. And he literally says in verse 43, Having said, Lord, I'm speaking to you out loud, Father, in prayer, but I do this so the people will know that what is about to happen isn't because of who I am, but because of the authority and the power of who my Father is, that your power, God, comes down and you will be glorified through this. He then says, and, he then says, and when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus cried out with a loud voice and he said three words. Lazarus, come out. Sorry, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. He called him by name because if it had just simply said to the tomb, come out, every dead body in that tomb would have risen. Therefore, it was specific for Lazarus. Lazarus was called. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, who had died, came out, but he was still bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to the other people, loose him and let him go. God is saying to each and every one of us this morning, that whatever the circumstances are that have come upon us, he speaks in authority this morning to each and every one of our hearts to say, he calls each one of us by name, come out, Alma, come out. God knows what your circumstances are. You're an overcomer and you're victorious in him. He asks you to come out and stand. Jill, come out. God knows exactly where you're at right now, what has come upon you. But he says, Jill, don't sit under the circumstances. Come out and stand. Lindy, whatever has come upon you, come out. Don't be bound up by the circumstance and live in a limitation of the less than, but stand in Jesus and come out and be set free that we still have a life to live no matter what the circumstances look like. 
Verity come out, whatever has come upon Verity, that God calls her into a position of purpose and power that as she obediently stands and says in response to him, yes, I will, Verity come out, there is a loosing of the circumstance and the grip of the enemy off of her life, but by faith she stands confident in Jesus. And where it says loose him and let him go, we need help. Jesus did what only he could do by calling Lazarus out. Now he delegates the responsibility of the people. Unwrap these grave clothes. What are the grave clothes? The grave clothes are all that we carry in the bondage of the enemy that he puts over our life in limitation, an excuse for why we cannot. Because we're so busy looking at the circumstances and our feelings and what we, we fall under that we forget who Jesus is but Jesus is saying to each and every one of us, come out. He said to me this morning, come out and preach. Mm -hmm. Come out and be released from the grave clothes, the bondage of the sickness and everything else of circumstance that brings a limitation upon you and stand. Those grave clothes are different for each and every one of us. What are we bound up by from history? What has cut across our path in a lie of the enemy that has stopped us from flowing and standing where we used to be, to go into the more than? What grave clothes are we so bound up by that we won't let go of them? They're so familiar to our identity that we're holding onto them so tight, wrapped up in our own complaint we will not let Jesus remove them. We dare to say to him, no. I hear what you're saying, Lord, but I don't want to. I hear what you're asking, Lord, but my will isn't there to obey you. I still want answers to my prayers, God, but don't ask me to go there. Don't ask me to do that. Don't ask me to be whatever. We are so resistant, bound up in our own control that we stop ourselves being able to flow in the freedom of the Spirit. What are we saying to God today? We were singing in worship about, I surrender all. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Where are you at on your journey with Jesus? Have you turned back from the focus of the cross, back onto the circumstances of the world, that because you've turned away from, you cannot see the power. And God today is saying, come out from where you've been focusing. Come out from the trappings of this world. Come out from the limitation that has been put upon you by what somebody else has spoken over you. Come out from the lies and deception of limitation that you've been believing for far too long. Come out from that stubborn heart that resists the truth of what God is saying because we dare to say to God, I will not. God says, come out, surrender your will to my will to allow my power to flow, that all my plans and purposes for your life will not be thwarted because you resist. Come out and stand up and step into and allow all the bondage of the enemy to be stripped away from you, that those grave clothes that have held you in a lie and a deception and limitation and bondage of the less than and taken you down and out are removed in the power and the truth of the cross where Jesus died on the cross to set each one of us free, that the enemy's grip is broken off of us as we come out of the enemy's camp into freedom in Christ and we learn how to stand in him and allow ourselves to be loved and taught and trained and equipped and we make wise choices that as we come into deeper understanding and the knowledge of God that we will learn how to stand that we will get up and go we don't lay under the circumstances watching films we stay focused in the spirit trusting God and in the power of God the healing capacity of God comes through that the Holy Spirit flows in power and God is able to be demonstrated for his glory. So all the battle that has been over my life this week, in actual fact, it's been for the past month. I need your prayers, please. 
pray for a breaking of the bondage of the enemy over my body because this last month has been a real battle and the battle belongs to the Lord. The enemy wants, to be, wants me to believe that my body is frail and I cannot. Confidence in Jesus says I stand and I will. But it doesn't take much for God to take, for the enemy to take us. It's okay to do something just this once. But the reality is we don't just do it once, do we? We do it again and again and again as we fall into the trap of the enemy. And we cannot do that. We have to know who is on, on the inside of us compared to the pressure that comes from the outside world. We are pressurized in the power of the Holy Spirit to withstand everything that comes against us. Will we draw on that pressurization of the Holy Spirit power that exudes in a confidence that we have in him, not in who we have for ourselves, but we have confidence in, in him that when he says yes, nothing will stop that yes from coming about. When we take our stand and we say yes to God, nothing will take us out of position and place in, in him. When we say, yes, Lord, here I am, send me. We go because our confidence is on he that is in us to take us and do what only he can do through us. Because it's not about us, it's all about him. And God is calling each one of us this morning, come out, come out from the bondage. Choose to stand confident. The pressure from the outside may remain for a while, but it's the decision that we make on the inside that determines whether we are going to be victorious and come out of it and above it and beyond it, or whether we're going to keep giving in to it. That decision has to be made in response to what God is saying to us this morning. Come out. Will we willingly this morning say yes to God? I know greater are you, Lord, in me than what the enemy is bringing against me. And I choose to stand up in you. I choose to step up. First of all, we take our stand, we stand up. And I would encourage everybody to stand up, please. We take our position that we stand up in Jesus. The invitation is to come out. Are you willing to step out of your limitation, your difficulties, and the pressure of the circumstance that you're living in right now? Are you willing to step out of it? If you are, take a step forward. And if you need to move out in your chairs, then do so to the aisle, please. But take a step forward if you are willing to step into freedom in Christ. And in doing so, you do by faith to step into all that God has for you. Because what the enemy has been doing to bring a limitation and bring the negative thinking and bring the oppression that we're living in the less than is broken right now in Jesus' name. As we are simply saying to the invitation of God, come out, we are saying, yes, God, I am set free in Jesus' name. I surrender all. And I receive the everything and the more of the truth of the cross into my life. And I stand confident in your power within me that I know that I know that I know that in my life in Jesus, greater is he that is in me, living in me, equipping me, empowering me, leading me and setting me free that I know I am an overcomer in Jesus name. I am victorious. I stand, no matter what the outside pressure has been, I stand confident and I step out in you this morning, Lord, because I receive the invitation to come out. As I have said yes to you, God, to come out. As everyone in this room this morning has stood up, stepped forward 
and said in response to that invitation, I have come out in you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for every life that is under the sound of my voice that responds to that invitation to come out. Uh, the invitation of God to step out of the pressure of the world and to stand confident in the authority that we have in you. The Lord, we all have the victory this morning. The bondage of the enemy is broken. We are not being shipwrecked. We are not going to crash in a plane because the power and authority of the Holy Spirit and the name of Jesus that covers our lives and the power of the cross in which we stand confident as we surrender our lives this morning back into your hands, Lord. Forgive us where we have taken our eye off of you. Thank you, Lord, for Holy Spirit this morning that draws us back into right positioning in you. And in you, Lord, we stand. We have the victory. We are overcomers. And Lord, as we keep our focus on you, all the pressure that has been is gone. It is destroyed in Jesus' name and can no longer oppress us, restrict us, limit us, separate, kill, nor destroy us. Because today, Lord, we receive the invitation to come out. And as we physically take that stand in the room, as we spiritually take that stand in our heart, we are set free in Jesus' name. Fill us up by the power of your spirit. Continue to lead us in the truth of your word. Continue to echo, resonate in our spirit in worship. That we come to you with a heart of gratitude and thankfulness for all that you are, for all that you're doing right now. And Lord, we are expectant and we are desiring, Lord, to rise up in truth and confidence and boldness in you. Because we do not have the spirit of timidity. We have the mind of Christ. We have the authority of Christ. Greater is he that is in us than he is that is from the world. We are victorious overcomers and we stand confident in you, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen.